Hello and welcome to Toffee TV. I'm delighted to be joined by none other than Lee Carsley. Lee, thanks so much for your time. Just here talking about your Everton career, obviously here in the American Toil Hotel here in Dublin. Uh, many Evertonians have sold out the place to come believe it. it. Packed. 100%. Um, just, just talk to us about your, your Everton career. You were signed by Walter Smith. Yeah. I think you were one of Walter Smith's last couple of signings. Yeah. What was it like kind of coming to the tail end of his era? And then kind of coming into the David Moyes era. Um, well, like, like you said there, I think I think when when I signed, I signed on the same day as uh, David Ginola. So, um, and I think maybe we I maybe played two or three games under him, under under Walt Smith. I think the the financial situation at Everton was not not what it is now. Um, and obviously, we were um, you know in a, in a tough position in in terms of um, getting players in and getting them out. So. Um, Walter Smith had, had obviously done a good job, but um, you know I, I think they, they, they obviously they thought that we needed new, uh, fresh blood. I really liked Walter Smith. I thought he was a good guy, um, and, it, and I was I was a bit I was a bit gutted that I didn't get a chance to play a few more games with him. But he um, playing under David Moyes uh, obviously changed the fortunes of the club. Turned turned around a really average team into a, a team that was pushing for Europe most seasons so that was um, you know I, I love the fact that I played for Everton it was a great great time in my career it seemed to be a lot of players that were playing under David Moyes era seemed to say the same thing now you, you obviously when, it, when he came in it was, wasn't long until you know the prodigy Wayne Rooney was, was discovered yeah. what, what was it like with him like did you, did you know he was going to go on to be amazing no, I, I you, could, you, could you see it in training no, uh, you could see it in training you could see that he was um, you know he was an excellent um, prospect you know at that age 15 when he was training with us I don't think anyone could have seen like you know and they would be lying if they said they thought he was going to be you know England's best goal scorer ever and, and, Man United. and Manchester United you know great records and transfer records and all these things but you know he had outstanding ability um, he had a great attitude he loved playing for Everton and, and um, you know, add all their attributes together. You know, the mentality he's got. You know, the, the bravery, absolute fearless at, at 15, 16. He was always going to have a great career. I think he was talking about fearless. I think I remember that moment against West Brom. I think it was Darren Moore. Uh, he put his hands on the ships against him. Uh, playing against him. I was just like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You, 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 even now, probably you wouldn't see that no. from someone that age. No, definitely. That arrogance. Not, no. no, and I think, you know, Wayne training with us at 15, 16, you know, would be knocking around like Joseph Yobo. And Joseph Yobo was a really strong player, big lad. And Wayne could definitely handle his, his body weight. You know, he's very strong, very quick, great balance. So, uh, yeah, it didn't, didn't surprise us anything that he did. Yeah, well, obviously, Wayne kind of went on to, to, to bigger things for his career. Um, Tim, Tim Cahill, or Tim Cahill, some of you may, may call. But um, he came in, two million from Millwall. And, you know, that season, we, we, were, we were tipped to, to go down. And yeah. We were tipped, you know, everyone was saying everything bad about us. It was just Tim and Marcus Bent, I think, That's were right, the only yeah. two players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you know we, we're kind of looking at that going. All right, we've lost our, our, our best player Wayne Rooney, yeah. because he was doing it in the Euros at that point, wasn't he? Yeah, 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 so yeah. We, we we lost him, and I think a lot of people were thinking doom and gloom. What was it that galvanised that squad that season? Because you, you like it's really yeah. unbelievable, and it was a great season for yourself yeah, as I, well. I think um, I think obviously Wayne getting sold, um, and the manager telling us when we were, we were away on pre-season in Houston that. Basically, Tim and um, Marcus were coming in, and that was it. No one was going. This was a squad, and I think there's about 18 of us. When you think about the, the size of the squads nowadays, like 30 and 32, you know, it really brought the whole club together. And and, and obviously, the, the results and the and the performances um, really galvanised not only the, the squad but the fans as well. We really got back beyond the team. Yeah, uh, uh, but it was such a, it was such an amazing. Like, there's so many highlights from that season between yourself scoring against Liverpool. I know that must have been one of your highlights of your career. Um, and that picture, that picture is iconic. The one with, with yeah, uh, all you guys on top on top of you and Tim, yeah, with the with the hand yeah, on back. Yeah. What, what memories does that bring back for you? That just that picture alone. I think that that um, I mean, obviously, I'm not in that picture. You can see one of my boots. That's, 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 what, that's what you can see. But the, the fact that I think it just it just shows you like if you look at that team, like none of them, none of them players really roll off the tongue in terms of the names. But like you know, for, you know, for every man, like they love playing for Everton. 
Uh, they were passionate about playing for Everton. Uh, they didn't want to lose. You know that spirit. You know that that sort of that sort of you know was the biggest positive from that season. Then the, the, what, what David Moyes got absolutely everything out of that squad. Absolutely, and, and it was obviously the big night against Man United with a big dunk squad, the goal as well. I think we hadn't beaten them in 10 yeah. years and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Some huge, huge, huge games. But uh, um, <laughs> Thomas Gravison was obviously our midfield partner coming up to, to, to January. Like, is he as mad as everybody makes out to be, or is that an exaggeration? No, I think it, it, they're probably they're probably underestimated how uh, mad he was. To be fair, he's um, he was he was uh, he was a great lad, like a good friend of mine, but like absolutely nuts, like like a crazy guy. But oh, I love him. I do. He's like we had a great partnership. We like we love playing together. Like we we, we were, you know, there, there weren't many partnerships. Uh, they might have been better than us, but they never we never got out for once. Like never. Ying and Yang. Ying and Yang. Yeah, but uh, like, do you, do you still keep in touch with him? Yeah, we still still speak to him every now and then. Yeah, Christmas and birthdays and that. Does he still have this mad Vegas life that everybody? No, I, don't, to? I don't think so. I think that was a, that was a bit exaggerated. That was a bit exaggerated. Really? I think it, I don't think it was ninety million. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. Okay, I've, well, not, I've not got any of it anyway. He's speaking not, of, he's not giving me. speaking of maybe exaggerations, do you think Real Madrid signed the wrong midfielder? No, hundred percent not. Hundred percent not. No, he's uh, like anyone that's seen Thomas at close quarters. You know the skill that he had, the drive that he had, the way he could dribble, the way he could play. If anything, the, what Real Madrid done was play him in the wrong position. You know he wasn't a, he wasn't a defensive midfielder by any means. That was a mistake that was made. Not not the wrong person. What, what do you think his best decision would have been? He would have been an attacking midfielder. Like you know, if, if you think about when when we took him out of the team, we replaced him. We replaced Thomas with Mikel. Mikel, yeah. So you know that kind of player. You know, Thomas wasn't a tackler one bit. You know, Thomas was a very skillful dribbler, driver, scores goals, creates goals. You know, tackling wasn't a strength of his. Yeah, I think that is a misconception because, like, growing up as a kid, I would have thought that no, he would have been you, like you, yourself, you, yeah, you a look tough tackler midfielder. Yeah. You look, you look at Thomas, and he's got that kind of body frame where. But no, he was, he was the opposite to that. Yeah, totally. But from from kind of that whole era, you know, we we, we went and had. You know, great days in Europe and stuff like that. Obviously, there's the Villarreal stuff that's been widely documented, the referee and stuff like that. But what was your favourite moment of, the, of all that time? Favourite moment? Um, probably, probably finishing fourth that season, um, playing against be beating Newcastle uh, on the Saturday, and then watching um, watching the game on the watching the game on the Sunday. Was Nat and Moisey got interviewed after the game? I'm not sure what he about, did. About, about, about finishing fourth. Oh, okay. And he was at home popping up a thing of champagne. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, uh, I, I think it is because okay. I remember it was called, I think it was Andy Gray at yeah. the time we were speaking to him oh, okay. about it. And he was just there in delight. And it was yeah. just such a good time to be in Evertonia from yeah. you go back the previous summer to, yeah. to what it was, to what it was then. It was, yeah. For me, it was the equivalent of Leicester winning the oh, league. Massive, yeah. It was massive at the time. I think we. we um, we all watched the Liverpool game in our houses and then we got the text message to say we're meeting back in Liverpool. So I had to drive back from Birmingham up to Liverpool and um, I, I got in the bar on Sunday and I got back, back into Birmingham on Tuesday and then we played Arsenal on Wednesday. Got beat 6-0, was it? 6 or 7-0? Like yeah, we were not talking about that. So it weren't, a, it, weren't a, it weren't a great ending but what a night. Well, what a three days. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we won't say that you were around the bend that no, week no, at all. We won't no, say that. No, <laughs> I think the defence were. Well, maybe, maybe. Yeah. But um, just in regards to, to Everton now, um, what, what do you think of the situation with them? Um, just in regards to the players they brought in and yeah. kind of the, the direction the club's going in I now. Considering from where you were, there was yeah, a lack yeah. of money yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. at the time, and now look at where we, I think where we're, we have I the think money. we're in a really good position. I think, um, you know, like, like everything, when, when you're trying to change the, the, the style of play and the direction uh, and what you want to play in, you know, there's always going to be a, a period of. Uh, you know, sometimes it's going to look a bit scruffy. Sometimes it's going to look great. You know, speak, speaking today, we just just beat West 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 Ham there. Great performance, a lot of positives all over the pitch. And these 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 new new signings, new Can players. Can I just say he didn't take his eye off the game once. No, these new these new players, they need time. They need time. You know, when you when you when you start a new job, regardless of whether you're a footballer or not, you need time to settle in. Yeah, I, th I think that's true as well because you look at what Pep did. Uh, uh, before the season last, we, we were even back to 4-0, you know, no. he, he needed time, Klopp needed time at Liverpool, yeah. and so on, you know. Um, so I totally agree with you in, in that sense. Uh, do you think 
Yeah. Matt Gosselin was the right man to take us forward. Yeah, so my, I, I, from from my own opinion, I, I would give him more time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think you know, every, regardless of, of what, what what manager you bring in, they're they're all going to need time. Like everyone needs time. Yeah, um, and then just just lastly, what, what are you doing with yourself now? Um, I'm coaching the England under 21. So. Um, with Aidy Boothroyd and Tim Dittmer. Um, luckily, lucky enough to work with like the likes of Dom and uh, John Joe and Tom Davis and Kieran. So got got four four Everton lads there, at, which are which are all doing really well. And you know, to be fair to you, as an Irish man, he's doing quite well in that regard, bringing the players through to yeah. Gareth Southgate. So fair play to you. Um, I just want to say, from my own personal point of view, thank you so much for your time. No problem, uh, guys. If you're watching, don't forget to subscribe to Toffee TV. Don't forget to like this video. And uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Huge shout out again to Lee for his time. Absolute gentleman. And uh, best of luck with this Q&A. Thank you. Now. Cheers. Thank you, Sam. Nice